in Diablo 3, like, it's hard to do that. The three Okay, so my name is Liz, and I'm going to be talking about rape culture. So, the term rape culture is very hard to define because it's not rape, essentially. It has many different definitions, so it's very different. Um, rape culture in, um, rape culture is defined as a culture in which everywhere you turn there's condoning, trivializing, and eroticizing rape, and collectively it sets in a tone that says this is no big deal, or that, or this is what women deserve, which is um, a definition provided by Lynn Phillips, a lecturer with the University of Massachusetts. And so my claim is that the media promotes a rape culture. And it does this in doing by it excuses offenders in rape cases, it teaches the wrong message, and it promotes music and movies that normalizes sexual violence. My first point is that the media excuses offenders in rape cases. They do this by blaming the victim in rape cases where they side with the offenders, in which they blame victim in victims in rape cases. An example was in the Guardian, a British national newspaper, stating that an 11-year-old was gang raped and then criticized by the New York Times in 2011 for dressing older than her age and wearing makeup and fashions more appropriate to a woman in her 20s. So there are also many other cases that were going on where the victim was blamed, even though clearly it was the offenders because they, there were um, another is that the media sides with the offenders in these rape cases. A big case that happened this past year was the Steubenville case in which a 16-year-old girl was raped by football players at a party and as the trial took place, a CNN reporter named Poppy Harlow said, these two men who had such promising futures, star football players, very good students, literally watched as they believed their life fell apart. So the reporter was sympathetic towards the offenders instead of being sympathetic for the victim who was actually, well, raped. My second point is that the media teaches the wrong message. They teach don't get raped as opposed to don't rape. An example of this um, is on the ABC News website where they describe the stupid bill case as a cautionary tale that highlights the dangerous mix of alcohol, sex, and social media. And they actually included tips where parents could talk to their kids about sex, alcohol, and social media instead of actually teaching their kids not to rape. My third point is that the media promotes music and movies that normalize sexual violence. In the music industry, there are several artists that degrade women and tolerate rape in their lyrics. A very clear example of this is this past summer's song by Robin Thicke, Blurred Lines, and if you actually look up Blurred Lines, it actually means something more sinister than actually a good beat. Or, yeah. But according to the NBCnews.com, five British universities have banned Blurred Lines from their campuses, claiming it excuses rape culture. So, and my, another example is movies. I'm sure all of you guys have seen Superbad. And, you know, it's really funny and all, but when you step back, the film actually, the plot is for the guys to get the alcohol so that they could get their girls drunk and then have sex with them. So, there are several other comedic films that tolerate sexual violence. And, in conclusion, the media promotes a rape culture by teaching the wrong message, promoting music and movies, and excusing offenders in rape cases.
All right, Liz, I've got uh, lots of good things and a couple of things that need to be fixed. So let's start with the good stuff. I thought the proposition was really clear. I thought you had a good layout of what the secondary structure was. And even though you said it was going to be hard to define rape culture, I thought you came up with a pretty effective definition that works for the purpose of your argument. So that was fine. And in fact, this sounded so much clearer as an argument than what we had looked at when I was looking at your outline and we talked about it a little bit. I was just going, I'm not sure how this is going to work. That worked really well. I thought, I thought once you got those issues cleared up, it was clear what your argument was. Uh, so that part's fine. And it's also well structured, like I said, so you develop it uh, and it's easy to follow. Now, the place where it's a little bit more problematic is in your proof on the arguments. I think you explain some things and show some examples that illustrate the points that you're talking about, but being able to make a generalization from them is a little bit hard because sometimes they seem like they're in a little bit of isolation. Uh, the one case, for instance, that the New York Times described the victim in the one thing as dressing a particular way, that that's part of what happened at the trial and it's reported. I'm not exactly sure that the media is can be said to be blaming in that situation. It seems like there's an inconsistency, but I, I doubt very much that anybody would say an 11-year-old had it coming to her because she was dressing sexy. You know, uh, So even if the New York Times mentions that, it's hard to figure out that you know that's something that's going to be the strongest proof that you have. There, there, there are people who believe these kinds of things that uh, study this and have made you know, inferences based on their expertise about this. I didn't hear from any of them in your presentation. I just heard the examples. I think the examples are pretty interesting and they illustrate the point that you're trying to make, but what they need to do, what you need to have is an extra layer there that gives us a reason to believe that these examples are meaningful and they have an impact on anybody. Um, you know, the Steubenville case got used pretty effectively in explaining uh, what the problem was about how it was presented and you had the one example about the reporter who was being sympathetic to the men. I'm not exactly sure, for instance, that that means that there wasn't sympathy for the woman or that uh, they see it as being appropriate. That's where I think you needed some more proof on that, and I think the assumption that because somebody expresses sympathy for uh, the two guys who committed the crime, that seems to suggest that there is no sympathy for the victim, that's an equivocation and you need to have better evidence on that part. Uh, the last one, you know, I think the, on your last point, I think that this is the place where you have the greatest potential of developing an argument and you just kind of rely on a couple of examples that the audience will be able to understand and uh, listen to, but which may not be all that convincing. The, the Robin Thicke song, for instance, okay, that's uh, oh, interesting. What's more interesting to me is that a number of universities in England, is it, uh, have, you know, prohibited in some way because they see it as being uh, potentially crossing this blurred line, you know, that sort of thing. I would like to hear from the authorities who made that decision decision, why they made that decision. That would give your argument a little bit more credibility there. The example is super bad. Uh, you know, I, I did see the movie. I, I, I'm not exactly sure that the interpretation of the events that you're giving it is the interpretation of events that I would give it. But if there are media scholars out there who've looked at these kinds of films and say that's exactly what it does, that it teaches people that this is an appropriate way to act and behave, uh, and that, th that it's really all strategy about, you know, getting drunk and getting laid, that, that kind of thing, or taking advantage of somebody when they're passed out. Uh, then, then I think that would be more convincing. As it is, you know, I'm, I'm filtering it through my own memory of the film, which is not great because, I, I, you know, I saw it once when it came out, and I think I saw it one other time since then, and so what is that movie, six years old now? Something like that? You know, and, and that's the only example that you've got. I'm sure there are lots of other examples. The music thing, for instance, there is so much music out there that is full of this kind of attitude. I'm surprised that you just relied on the one example. I know it's a contemporary example. It's the most recent one. But there's just a whole bunch of stuff that talks about you know, objectifying women and you know, treating them a particular way. I think you could find better 
information here and there's a lot of research that's been done on that so I think you missed an opportunity on that but I did like the fact that you turned it into much more of an argument than we had before I, I thought like I said I think you rescued what you had from your outline quite well